how are you all doing merry christmas in advance but hey don't forget that i'm also waiting for my christmas gift and don't forget that we have a trip that is coming on on the first to 8th february if you ever want to visit ghana this is the best time for you to visit ghana it's called the maya experience happening february 1st to february 8th so check the description box and book your trip to ghana with me A year ago, I came in here to meet a young black man who decided to live off-grid, you know, living inside a forest. He was born and raised in Italy and decided to return to his motherland. And when he returned to the motherland, he didn't want to stay in the city, he didn't want to stay in the village, but he decided to live in the forest. My name is Joshua Quicuesiedo. I was born and partially raised in Italy, north of Italy, Milan. So yeah, I'm just gonna see how is he doing because I love checking up on people, yeah, to know if things are improving or he wants to give up and go back to where he came from. So. I finally got here and I feel like a lot has changed. He's telling me I should ring the bell and wait. Whoa. Is that the bell? Why is it not coming? <laughs> Yo! My brother! My brother for my younger brother! <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. see, because of this guy, I don't even want to call myself the village boy again. Hey, the village boy again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the village boy. Village I'm, boy. I'm the village boy, and I think you are the forest man, man. Hey, okay, let's put it down this way. Let's put it down this way. Hey, how's it going? Everything's How fine, are you man. doing, man? Oh, we've ever got everything. Yo, a lot has changed, man. Uh, so far, I mean, this is just a little piece. I'll bring you inside, you'll see what changed. Hey, hey, you came long time ago, one year ago. One year ago? <laughs> you guys don't know him. He's the guy who is living off grid. Like, I got here a year ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is wrong with yeah, this I'll guy? I'll be skeptical also. I remember, I remember. I remember also the way you drink ton. The way you drink ton. Today you come inside, you drink it. Oh, I'm telling you. He, 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 he walked up with rain water and he's like, dude, just enjoy yourself. Yes. Hey, hey, they said Milo. Wow. So, brother, first of all, this is the kitchen. And uh, please come, you feel the freshness. Uh, Sit down and chill, my pacho. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, I appreciate it. Would you like some water? Definitely. Hey, here, hey, walk in here, must not be easy. Mm. So let me give you ton. One name ton, you know ton. Wow. Ton is rainy water. Rainy it's like, water. Uh -huh. Oh, I need to feel it though. It's okay. Tastiness. Wow. Rain water. Mm hmm. You feel, hey, it's, it's sweet though, like Milo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this one is, doesn't taste like Milo, bro. <laughs> oh. All right, man. Oh, this yes. is the entrance. Yeah, eh? this is an entrance. Yes. By the way, yeah, there's also the name of my great grandparents, Ochiame Yawisiedu, Abrani Kor. They are the one actually that got this land and left in heritage for the upcoming generations. So, whatever is done here is, of course, thanks to them. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Go in, go in. You're welcome. No, you're no, welcome. no, no, no. Please go ring the bell and be fine. Oh, <laughs> I feel like a lot has really changed man see I, I think um people don't know who you are maybe mm -hmm. someone is seeing this video for the first time yes, yes, yes. I've been here before so this is like trying to check up and see what is going on with him mm -hmm. but can you do a bit of introduction okay so my name yes is Joshua Kukwe Siedum and uh yeah, the, the video that you placed was a guy that left Italy in order to come to Ghana. So exactly. Why in Italy? Because uh, I'm also from Italy, also from Ghana, but I was raised up partially there. And then uh, at the age of 20, I left and I went all around the world and kind of uh, looking for myself. Everything self-sponsored, of course, and sometimes even with no money. So it was a full-on experience. And eventually what I realized through the journey is that the way is nature. So came up that my great-grandparents had land here and I came here a couple of years ago. So back to nature. Mm -hmm, yes. I don't even know thing. why I need to wear slippers here. Yeah? <laughs> but that's why. Thank you. Ah, Thank back you. to nature, man. Uh -huh, yeah, yes, correct. Man, <laughs> Whoa. Okay, yes, man. Yes. Man, like, it, it feels so good knowing that your feet touches the ground in here, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My brother, see, 
a lot has changed. I keep on saying this, mm -hmm. that a lot has changed. Why you have tents in here? So, because I told you, I mentioned, I mentioned that to you about people coming for retreat programs. Eventually, it was Corona time, was was a plan. Mm. But we actualized it. And actually, we already have um, four workshops. So, there's tents here. There's accommodation. There's a dome also. I will show you. There's also something else that we'll build with airbags. So, we had already four workshops. And there's a fifth one coming next week. And uh, some other will come next year also. So, we went for it. We went for it. People are coming, learning how to build sustainably, how to grow food sustainably, how to even uh, work with clay, how to heal themselves with, with herbs. So also people from the close by village are coming, having some sort of also micro business for themselves while teaching the ancient way. So we went for it. <laughs> this was not here. <laughs> yeah, it's true. This, was, uh, this is now the open shed. It's the place where we chill, we sit, we feel, we eat. And uh, you might remember the water logo. Of course, that's the only thing that you had here when I came here. <laughs> it's true, it's true. And, and even that day, he wanted to give me well water. I'm like, I'll just accept the rainwater. Hey, water <laughs> hey, what am I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the water is still here. Still, we will do some work around it. But uh, right now, it's um, so basically, it's not a water well, but it's, wor it's a water tank. So we oh, collect the water from the roof. That's why we build this one also. So everything has more purposes. But is this eco friendly? Yes, yes, so basically these rocks are from the area, but mainly is what is built with is air bags. So they are recycled bags, those where people might place inside cassava or rice bags, rice bags. So we fill them with soil and soil is everywhere, of course, all around the world. And then there's a certain techniques to use and boom, we have it. And these bags, instead of going somewhere in the ocean, are staying here, plastic lasts for thousands of years, which will make this building lasting for longer. Kukasedi, okay, let, let me uh, understand it. why you decided to choose a place like this to stay because i mean it's not only it's peaceful but especially is uh, in connection to our needs you see what's happening here last time you didn't come so i want you also to see what's happening with the house and with the garden yeah so in this very area i planted 30 plus trees this is just a, like a two plots right mm. I, I planted a bunch of trees a bunch of plants a bunch of herbs because we are from nature it's not just a philosophical way or like i'm trying to be you know a poet or whatever but we are nature you know we eating from nature we are getting our nurturance is coming from nature so mm. living in an environment that feeds nature and therefore feeds yourself so it's a healthy environment it's a wealthier environment that's why i choose to live in a place like this why ghana because it's subtropical and it's very it's very very wealthy very wealthy oh see can i ask you a question mm -hmm. Somebody should, uh, said I should ask you that living in a place like this, you don't mm. get bored? Oh, how can you? I mean, look, in one year, you, you remember how it was yeah. this place? Mm. Look in one year how much has been done. Every day there's something to do, you know, especially even if you have, don't have nothing to do. I mean, you, you sit with yourself, which is, it will not hurt yourself, you know. I guess uh, most of the problems in the world are coming from the fact what that... What is the advantage of living off-grid? Is the fact that you are self-sustainable, you know, you don't rely on anybody, you don't need to wait anybody's, you know, you don't need to pay anybody's rent, you don't need to wait for, you know, you are not concerned at the end of the month or what's going on. Is your work is directly paid off by the land. And the disadvantage yeah. of uh, living off grid? Disadvantage, adventures, I, I would say there's none, except for maybe because of subtropical environment here. Um, living so close to the element also expose your body to different diseases and so on mm -hmm. but also it's part of life so I mean I don't I wouldn't call it disadvantage I would call it uh, is, is the journey of life you know we, we live and we die that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yo is, see is this a walk path uh, yeah because yeah. hey, the last correct. time I came there was no walk path yeah, this time day, I can hey, see you enjoy the walk uh, path of course man <laughs> walk path okay <laughs> Yeah, Maybe yeah, enjoy yeah. the walk park, man. Yes. And when I came here, he was building this. Yes, yes. And now right. it's done. Now it's done. Now it's done. So this is the house. We took about six months to be built. It was myself and Damensa, a man from uh, another close by village. But um, let's say he came for three months. Then the other three months was mainly myself. Uh, it was a full on work. It was a full on work, full of trials and mistakes. But right now we have a house. I want, I want to show you the house. Why not? I want to show you. I mean, this is my room. So oh, that okay. one. But I want to show you the, the living room. But it's a, you know, it's, it's a cozy, fresh wow. place. I, I'm proud of it. It's a, it's a proper place. Now yeah. I think I can go now, for the. You remember this one? Really yeah. Yes, if you hold here. Hey, go. Oh, the way is going for it. Eh? This yeah, much, no, no. you drink it all, eh? I'm <laughs> afraid. Right. Mm. This is rainwater. Hey, what's We're living it? off grid. Uh huh. Me pacho. Huh. No, no. Hey, all of it. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure. 
Correct. <laughs> Correct one. It, this one, it tastes like Milo. Ah, it tastes like Milo. Hey, what's going on here? It looks so good, man. Yes, yes. So, I, I like the fact that you don't have like windows being covered and all mm. of that. No, exactly. You just wanted to leave it open space? Yes, for this one. My room is closed because when I sleep, I want to be more protected also for mosquitoes and so on. But that's for this one is the um, sort of uh, living space, living room. So, I like it to be fresh. Here, I sit down, I read books, I cook. I, I, I feel it's a meditation station, so I want it to be very fresh. It's a couch. Huh? Yes, yes. It's also self-built with a wood recycle from different projects and so on. This was built out of recycle? Yes, yes, yes. Whatever was uh, used with different products. There was a bed that I did a while ago that eventually I didn't need anymore, so I reused it in order to build this sofa. Yes. <laughs> hey, what am I? Hey, is that um, a special... Chair, yeah, this, this I would say is the proper meditation station chair. This one, yeah. Oh, so it's a one bedroom, yes, in yes. The living room. Yeah, I mean, depends and if you also consider the veranda is a bit of another room per yeah. se, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, um, but here, yeah, there's a shower right here. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. so it's a simple shower, but here it's fresh, it's cozy, so has been made also with the, with the same rocks, and then um, the water is directed on the back, the back. and um, yeah, I mean, it's a bucket system. So it regulates the the waste of water instead of having a wow. something that you open and you shower, shower, you just think and the water goes. In this case, you, you wash yourself properly with the water that you have. And also, there there are solar lights right now. You cannot see them, but there's a there are solar lights also on top of the here. roof. Yeah, on top of the roof, they are feeding the two lights in the room. Also, there are some strings. Also, they are kind of creating a sort of a vibe and night. Not necessarily like flashing lights, but a nice vibe they are created by the solar light. So we are sustainable, we are sustainable, man. Here's the garden. Uh, right now you don't see it because it's been harvested, but a lot of uh, groundnut, peanut, tomatoes, okra is still there. It was a bunch of, uh, this season was next level. So also there was so much that I needed to storage it. So I dry some tomatoes, mm. I did some, was, was full on, was full on. This one here is a toilet that has been built. And um, this is the toilet. Yes, you want to go for back, to release yourself a little. Ba back to nature. <laughs> you want to go back to nature? No, it's a. I mean, whatever you actually gonna deliver there is gonna go back to nature. That's for sure. It's a regenerative system, so it's not just something that comes and goes. You know, it's it's a cycle. You know, so this one is a is a squatting toilet. You do you go you deliver you enjoy yourself and then you cover with sawdust and then it will go back to the land. Wow! And creating fertilizer. Yes, and this one here on the back is a dome that has been built also with airbags and um, is a function as a room for the guests when they come in. You can also go inside if you want. This was built with airbags, eh? Yes, yes, full on. This is all airbags from, from down to top is all bags. So it, it is a, quite of a technique. It's not that easy. It's rough also because it's heavy, but it is it's very cheap. Y you built this by yourself? Yeah, this was me and Joanna. Uh, Joanna, maybe you might oh, see when from Joanna, Joanna came over here. Yes, yes, the yes. Congolese, yes, yes. Uh, in German, yes. Yeah, I don't, correct, have, correct. I don't have to say that, but I just. Then if anyone to... knows it. Hey, oh, wow, it? it looks so pretty. Mm, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. If you go, it's, oh, it's, it's fine and it's incredibly fresh because of the thickness of the walls, you know? Wow. Oh, nice. So it's a sleepy room, cozy. Hey, what am I just going to drink? So, you can literally enjoy yourself in here, but this place is literally for. Two people. Uh, so I mean, why? generally we open up for one person, you know. But uh, also two people can stay. Two people can stay. Mm. <laughs> wow. Hey, good. Hey. And then yeah. So one thing I would like to mention is that mm. this one here. See, because it's complete, it's coming from. I mean, the soil is coming from the soil, right? Mm. I mean, the soil is coming from the earth. The bags are recycled. Here, you some people also sell rice bags in order to be recycled and so on. But uh, the whole cost for this one, like on, no, without labor, because we build it ourselves, but the whole cost, we didn't go further beyond $180. For the whole? Yes, for, for this, when it comes to material. No, even actually, no, it's 150 euros, so I don't know how much is in dollars. So you see, this is a room, is a legit room, and that's what you can get, you know? So right now, also, some people started to contact me asking if I could build. Build for them. Yes, and uh, before I was too busy because here I still wanted to create more but now I feel more accomplished so I dig more into these DMs and so on emails 
And so uh, I guess if you're looking forward to build something like this mm-hmm. at your backyard anywhere mm-hmm. in the world, mm-hmm. contact Kukwase. Hey. Contact hey. Kukwase. Hey. Even if you want him to build in America, he will come. Hey, <laughs> Uh, only, only if you get a match in America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Mili, um, there's also people asking me if I know somebody here that owns land and so on. And I know people. And here the land can be relatively cheap. Cheap, yeah. Uh, because of this not like a yeah, Bria Accra. Yeah. This area is a bit different. We're actually one hour, 30 minutes drive from Accra. Mm-hmm, so if mm-hmm. you want to leave one hour, 30 minutes from drive from Accra, mm-hmm. definitely yes. is the best place to buy land. I mean, as you can see, it is not a place where you can go to the shopping mall behind the corner. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a place that leaves no choice than living an off-grid life. So if to whoever is really willing to live their life, then to those I can show my support maybe into, you know, finding land. But it's, but it's not an easy task. I'm not a middleman and I don't want to be one. That one yeah. thing is a different deal. But uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, there is um, the possibility to build mm. something that can be with airbags or we can be with uh, mud or we can be with different natural, as long as it's a natural way. And, um, but only two people that really are willing to live a sustainable life. Therefore, you know, buy land not to gain that monoculture farming or to build a filling station or whatever uh. they can people that really want to work for the land because you know the african land has been you know african land has been abused already for too long yeah so wh- whoever wants to invest in the land needs to work for the land that's the point about the whole thing is working for the land that eventually will give everything back to you so it needs to be a regenerative system where we where we prize the land that it gives so much to to the whole world literally you know so instead of coming abusing again Start working for the land and the land will give everything back to you, make no mistake about it. This was the, the prototype that I did before starting the bigger dome. So I was like, let me see how it is just to come up with the structure. So I took all the plastic bottle that I gather here and uh, all recycled items here and I, pay, I put it up. So it was uh, just a, a small scale model, then I reflected into a bigger scale. So you may wonder what are these trenches? Yeah, I what are you looking for? Come, I'll show you. Come, I'll show you. So now this area is a bit... I left it a little bit, growing a little bit more. The trenches were deeper. I know the rainy season came and filled them with sand. So there are two reasons. One is to gather sand, but the main one is right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is the... What are you trying to do? It's a water reservoir, so it's a, it's a water collector, so in order to gain, to preserve all the rainwater. Instead of it going elsewhere, I collect it all here. But not only to collect it, but also to create a swimming pond. So right now what's happening is that um, it started to leak from one of the points, so I need to empty it. And as you can see, there's also a lot of uh, onion, a lot of sand. Mm. So we will eventually we'll see, maybe soon, we'll make a filter that will bring the water clear. And also we're going to, you know, plaster in a way that it will not... Uh, get the water inside but there was a point here where the water was flowing I was just swimming inside beautifully oh wow yes 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 so this has been built also with a group of people it's a contumere contumere you can take them eh? you take them you enjoy them yeah contumere and here's also popo. Everything's been planted. Everything's been planted. This mm. is cocoa, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, this cocoa. This is this is what this, was here. This for is a mirror. I used to use it. Oh, uh, this boy, it just rolls around. It does its own thing. So yeah. I'm not aware of it. Yes. Last time I came, that was the mirror that he was using. Ah, yes. And this was his kitchen. Oh yes, yes. I'm like, <coughs> now it's the storage room. Now, now the kitchen became the storage room. Yes, yes. I mean, that's incredible, mm-hmm. man. Soon it will go down. I mean, it's almost two years. This thing, this thing here, so. But so far it's functioning as a storage room, so all our tools is here. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. And um, that's all pretty much, yeah. See, if you haven't seen Coco before, <coughs> this is Coco. You know, the world is stealing from Africa. Oh, yeah. They make the best chocolate, but this we one. struggle here. Uh-huh, from this one. From this one, yeah? We struggle here. Bro, don't you think the world is stealing from Africa, man? All right, that's, that's the story, the, the story of Africa, you know? So that's what I'm saying, also investing in the land. Sustainability is, is te- talks about that matter, you know? Instead of growing to sell cheap to somebody else that will actually gain the bigger piece of the cake. For example, myself, this cocoa, I don't sell it. Mm. So what we do during the workshop, I use it. I, we, I show people how to make chocolate themselves without even machine. So it's the, it's the most organic, natural chocolate you can do from the cocoa forest. So wow. this is part of our workshops also, that by the way will come uh, yeah, very soon also. And uh, so that's the point of it, is trying to be sustainable, meaning that 
if you want to, you can sell, but you don't have to, you know, because you have all the knowledge that allows you to provide yourself whatever you need, also whatever you want. Mm. So there's the ideal of this life, and also what I try and pe push people towards, you know, investing in the land, the energy, the money, also invest them in the land, but fully not to make a pig farm or mm. no, invest them in order to be with the land, you know. And look, it's still sprouting. This this cocoa has been planted by my great grandparents. Ooh. We still stay here. We use it anymore. Uh, sometimes Millie is the guest when they come in, they chill in here, you know. But for myself, not much. I just I just use the toilet. This one is what I enjoy when I come here. <laughs> <laughs> and the back, hey, do you remember this? I, I moved it here, huh? Let's see. Oh. Shot. Let's see. Let's record it. Let's see. Give me the cocoa, my brother. Uh, sorry, I can't, uh, you can put it down. Let's, one shot, eh? We'll see it really. Okay. What am I? The audience is here. The hey. audience is here. You are, you are almost one million, one million followers. Eh? Yeah. Do it for them. For them. Hey. Do it for them. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he went in. He went in. <laughs> oh, with the money. Adai. 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 You just try it. Okay. okay try, try again. Try again. Try again. Ah, no. Try again. See, I'm trying again, man. One four. One down. Ah, but this looks so easy, man. Hey, look. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Let's see. Let's see. Man, no, no, what am I? You're dropping bombs right here. Eh? You're dropping bombs. So I give up. Bombs. I give up. Oh, don't never give up in life. I was about to give up a lot of time here, but Whoa. then I went at the buzzer, just like that, just like that. <laughs> You're going back on your cocoa. Eh? <laughs> so, you live here all the time? Yes, yes. That's the place. I, I hardly go outside. I, I don't really need to do that. Sometimes I need to go maybe to the local market. Happens. You know, but now, especially after this season, I had a bunch of, you know, food, so I actually st eat it a lot from the land. Mm -hmm. like you, you've done a great job uh, maintaining mm. this place, and at the same time, improved on what I saw the last time. Mm. And I know and believe that there are people who want to, I mean, get a chance to come here and see what I have seen. Mm -hmm. uh, where are they going to find you then? So there's a, the main one would be the Instagram page. The Instagram page, live to learn underscore learn to live, is where most of the news or most of the action takes place. But uh, also right now we're working on a YouTube channel. So also that one is just to see some progress and more in details, shared knowledge. And uh, last but not least, most importantly, somebody wants to uh, have our support or uh, make a usage of one of our services as a workshop was also building a natural home then it would be the website itself also uh, in the website you can find whatever also there's also a, a donation link so in case somebody wants to support the vision without being able to eventually being physically here it also can be done so the website is uh, live to learn learn to live dot net and over there you can find all the information um, what are you doing here to give back to the community Mm, uh, like the community in here what are you doing to give back to them thank you thank you very much because uh, that's one of the point also of the whole um supporting others in order also to be supported so the thing about the workshops is that of course it creates some jobs for some of the community for example auntie m as the chef auntie dora as the pottery master comes and teaches and so on and uh, also we have a uh, the building process so the building process as i mentioned this one here i've been uh, helped by a few guys from the village okay and uh, they generally ride in bikes you know our boys earning a few literally a few hundred Ghana cities mm. a month so since they came here and there was this request from this person from like diaspora from the states willing to build something i couldn't do it on my own i was not willing to do it on my own so i called them. them so four of them plus me we went there we started to build and first of all, it was a blessing. It was actually a very nice experience, challenging, of course, but with them, it was very much of a blessing. But um, also, the thing about this job are two. One is that it preserves also their ancient knowledge about natural building because yeah. they have it. It's just that it's fading away because of westernization. So with this one, it preserved this way of building, but also adding up some knowledge about recycling, for example, recycling techniques and so on, mm. but also increases their wages. Right now, instead of getting few hundred Ghana City, they get few hundred heroes, you know? So, and as, as the skills are increasing, also their wage will increase. So one thing that I would like to mention is that, you know, land here can be also, in this very area can be quite cheaper. You know, we talk about a month rent for a, for a land. And uh, people like not Ghanaian, they cannot own land apparently, they can, they can lease it for 99 years, which yeah. is still like yeah. benefit for yourself, your children, the children of your children. 
but the thing is that uh, you know as i mentioned you know a, a something like a dome 150 euros this house for the materials all this house only for resources without labor we talk about 500 euros you know for the whole house but um what wouldn't be cheap is our labor and that's the thing usually in africa cheap labor you know yeah. so that's definitely what it cannot happen definitely what we don't want and that's also what i want to bring back to the boys you know that we are working together and give them back some wages that would allow them also to do whatever they want to do with the money they will earn um one thing that if you had a chance to change about a continent africa what will mm. you change to be honest i would just think more of how can i change myself in order to to learn to be embraced by this like incredible and huge culture you know um of course every culture every nation every area is, it's we're all human so we all have our you know ups and downs but uh, knowing the history mm -hmm. of africa and other countries how they how africa has been exploited um me you know i didn't grow up here so um, i'm i'm from here but i didn't grow up fully here so my concern is how do i need to change myself in order to be functional in this reality wow. and that's for me what was my learning process you know because uh, all of us having nice talk especially diaspora oh yeah you know africa pro africa you and then, then we come in here and we live the most privileged life because in the end we hold a sort of privilege when we come here uh our skin like for example myself here i'm a white man can you imagine wow. you know what i mean i've been called Bruni every time and abroad i've been affected by racism next level and then i come here i'm a white man how and you know it's a step on my back yet is the reality that i'm living um so because of this area i'm not having as much privilege as i could have in accra let's be honest yeah. uh, actually i get i got a lot of you know mocking comments every now and then you know oh, look at bruni koifum you know oh, bruni oh, go, oh, di banku. you know i imagine i mean italy somebody said oh look at black man eating pizza and i'm like mm. <laughs> but yeah you know but it's a different context that personally could be harsh for me but for me it's important to understand how can i change uh my way of seeing it in order to be functional in here especially because i'm not here for a holiday i'm living here this is my place you know so yeah that's maybe what i would say you know all right so thank you so much for coming along with us if you watched the previous episode you definitely know that he has done a great job so book a retreat with him come learn something and then uh, trust me you will never be disappointed because I am not disappointed at all. Hey. Thank you so much and then I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and be part of the Million family. I am Maya. Million. Hey.